make a few notes and then um, I'm going to look a little more closely at how we make a time series plot of approximate solutions to one of these differential equations. So the first comment, x dot equals f of x. This is typical notation. What I mean by that is f of x is basically always going to be used for an unknown right-hand side when we're working with a single equation. And um, x dot, x dot is defined as the derivative of x with respect to time. So dot always indicates the derivative with respect to time. And in this class, we're always going to be working with things that are evolving in time. So usually when we're working with a single equation, it's going to be x dot equal f of x. Uh, potentially it could be y dot equals f of y, but that, that would be more unusual. Okay, so now a definition. Here's the definition. If there's a point x star, if f of x star is equal to zero at some point x star, then dx dt is equal to zero at that point. So I suppose that should be sort of obvious because if we have a point x star where f of x star is equal to zero and we have a differential equation that says that x dot is equal to f of x, well, that means that at x star, f of x is zero, so dx dt is also zero at that point. And so the definition is such a point is called a fixed point. And so we've already seen this term, but this is really specifying that definition. A fixed point is a point x star such that f of x star is equal to zero. Associated with a fixed point, we have a, a, a couple more things to say. First of all, x of t equals x star, where x star is a fixed point, is always a solution to the differential equation. Oh, why would that be? Well, let's see. This is saying that for every time t, the position is just this constant position x star. And so dx dt is zero. We're staying at this, this one point, and so our position is not changing. Our velocity is zero. But in addition, f of x star, by definition of x star, is zero. And so we have zero equals zero. So this function certainly satisfies this equation. And so that means it's solution. And specifically, we say this solution is an equilibrium solution to the differential equation. Okay. Now I'd like us to return to the example that we were looking at before. And so that example was x dot equals sine x. And uh, Steve started by plotting f of x as a function of x. And then he filled in some arrows saying, that if we start at a position here, we know that our change with respect to time is going to be negative, so we'll, our position will move this way. Our change with respect to time is still negative, we'll move this way, etc. And so we can draw in an arrow in this direction whenever the change with respect to time is negative. And when, whenever the change with respect to time is positive, our position is going to be increasing, and so we can put in an arrow in this direction. And so filling in all of those arrows, in addition, we draw in circles wherever we have a fixed point. And if arrows are pointing towards a fixed point, solutions are moving towards that fixed point. We call that stable, as he said, and we color it in. Or if solutions are moving away from a fixed point, we leave it as an open circle. A phase portrait of this system is specifically this line with these arrows and these filled and open dots. And this is giving us the information that if I were to start at this point, I know how the state of the system is going to evolve in time. It's going to approach this point. And if I were to start right at this point, well, that's an equilibrium solution. So I'll stay at that point for all time. And so to refer to the position, we say the state of the system. 
And the state of the system, we sometimes talk about it flowing or evolving. And so we say that the state of the system evolves under the action of the flow. I'm not really identifying what the flow is, but it's a term that's used in that way. Oh, this, this point is flowing towards there, or the state is changing, uh, being pushed under the action of the flow. And so the next thing I wanted to do was go ahead and look at constructing time series <clears throat> based, based on having x and f of x. Okay. And so the time series, we've already seen this term, it refers to approximate solutions uh, that are written x as a function of time, time position. The very first solutions that we can fill in are the equilibrium solutions. For this sine function, they occur at zero, at pi, at two pi, and at negative pi, and those are supposed to be straight lines. So these are solutions where we start at this point and we'll stay at this point for all time. Reasoning about other solutions that we might sketch in, what if we were to start at this point? Okay, so this is in between 2 pi and pi, and actually it's right in between. It's at the point of fastest negative motion. Oh, okay, okay, so we're going downward, and then things are going to slow down as we approach pi. So I'm going to draw it like that. And if we start all the way over here, we're going to start quite slowly, begin to pick up speed, fall quickly through the center, and then approach this pi solution again. I could pick any point in here as an initial point and draw in a potential time series of a solution. So it's not just that there are a few special points where these exist, they exist for any possible initial condition uh, drawn from, from this line. And so let's pick a similar two here, uh, here and maybe down near zero as initial conditions. So if I'm right in the center, again, uh, now I'm moving positively and it's the fastest I'm moving. So I'm moving positively and fast. And then as I get closer, okay, I'm moving slower and slower and slower and slower because the height of this function is giving me my speed. And if I'm starting far away, you can see that I start slowly and as I move along, I get faster. And then I begin to get, my velocity begins to get slower again. Draw that in as well. And, um, okay, down between zero and negative pi, the same thing is happening that happened between pi and two pi. So I'll just copy those. And then below negative pi, okay, well, I didn't draw very much information for us, but we can see, we can at least see that it's positive, so it's increasing. And above 2 pi, also I didn't draw very much information, but again, positive, so we can see it's increasing. And we can see the stability of the various fixed points um, by how these time series are approaching them. So we can see that this is a stable one. Um, time series are moving away from this point, so it's unstable. Uh, the time series are moving towards this point and away from this point. And I'm going to pose a question now that I'm not going to answer, but notice that we go unstable, stable, unstable, stable, do things have to alternate like that? Okay, so that's the question that I'm going to end this video on.